mean, myself and Craig, we've got in-car footage, you know, of times where you've been setting off in front of us and we always click the in-car on just a little bit earlier mm -hmm. so that we can come back and watch and just listen to it. That noise, it's incredible. That, you know, for, for us, that's what rallying is. That's what it's all about. You know, we had a bit of a standoff, didn't we, at the presentation with the two cars and <laughs> a bit of crack there. And um, yeah, and, and everybody loves it. You know, everybody says to me, it's the best sounding rally car there is. You know, uh, nearly beat. Welcome back to another episode of my Off the Track Motorsport podcast. I'm excited to introduce our new sponsor, at Sissippi Ski Resort in Manitoba, Canada. If you're looking for an unforgettable winter adventure, a Sissippi is the place for you. They offer free accommodation, full visa assistance and a variety of roles from bar and restaurant work to ski instruction and lift operation. At the Sissippi, you'll be part of a fun, welcoming community where you'll make lifelong friends and lasting memories. With Scottish general managers, one of whom you might see wearing a kilt in the snow, you'll feel right at home. For more information, please email sales at thesissippi.com. A big thanks to them for supporting this podcast. Now, let's dive into today's episode. Daniel Harper, congratulations on uh, second place this year in the rally. Um, how was it? I think it was uh, probably one of the hardest rallies I've done um, on the island you know, with, the, with the conditions and, and everything else that was going on. and. Um, the build up to it, which was nothing for me really. Um, yeah, it was a very, very difficult event, I thought, to judge, and the, the conditions were horrendous on Friday night. Uh, yeah, we only did really three stages. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, it was uh, an interesting event, uh, a lot of interesting uh, with the route change and the format. Uh, I think the format was quite difficult um which is the endurance of the event so yeah no we had a good time we enjoyed it that was the main thing that's what i wanted to go and do was go and enjoy it mm, good yeah it certainly was a different event obviously you've got years and years of experience over me obviously with your old age <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. But yeah, for me, uh, it certainly was quite a difference in, in rally. It was, um, with these new bogey times, it was really enjoyable taking out a lot of the chicanes and stuff. I mean, with the top speed of your car, how were you enjoying it? The, I, 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 I don't mind chicanes. Um, I think sometimes that uh, they just give you a little bit of a check in the stage and stop you getting giddy like you. Uh, but it's, I think I think uh, with age comes a little bit of caution, um, and uh, but no, they, they to go down uh, Greben especially where they take the big chicane out over the over the crest there into the into the straight, I think it's tremendous. Uh, and you always think I'll take that flat, but you never do. Um, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it, it does give you a bit of a bit of a buzz. Uh, trying to say something without being crude, really. Um, but yeah, no, I think the excitement's there and trying to get down to that bogey time, the Inch Kenneth stage, you know, doing that. I've tossed that around in my head since and thought, yeah, it was a good blast, but it'd be better if we could do it as one stage all the way through. Yeah, definitely. That would be a, a brilliant stage. I understand why they can't do it at the moment. Um, but no, they, I think lifting the, lifting the average speed up, uh, the speeds, there's two sides to the speed, isn't there? There's a hell of a buzz, but then you get a hell of a problem like with what uh, Craig and Kerry had, uh, if mm. you're not careful. And it's balancing that uh, that side of it. Yeah, I think I think this year was very, very uh, exciting on one hand, very trying on another hand. and But ultimately, we go rallying to go fast. And that was what we did. We went fast. And um, yeah, yeah, challenging for the organisers. Very. Definitely very challenging. Hats off to them for getting, you know, what they did, making work with what they oh. had. Really. Terrible conditions, like some some huge accidents. There's, you know, lots of carnage. Very difficult for them. Very, very difficult. Uh, I can't thank the organisers, the marshals, everybody that helped on the event, the service crews, the whole lot. Absolutely brilliant. Hats off to you all. Uh, and 
it's a, I think it's a testament to rallying uh, and the people that go to put these events on the uh, somewhere like that. That is very, very bad. Can be very bad in the weather conditions. Can be beautiful, obviously, as well. Mm-hmm. But I think just absolutely the, the following of the rally, and that's what's taken me to Mull all my life. Um, and yeah, it's been, yeah, it was, it was good. The, the, I think the only thing I found this year was, apart from with yourself and one or two of the other competitors, the atmosphere wasn't there, and I couldn't work out why. I didn't. I felt that the event has gone quite flat for some reason um, mm-hmm. you always make me laugh so that's good because um, <laughs> you like to take this the wrong way but you're like the village idiot aren't you you know yeah. you just got like a clown outfit on and run around just <laughs> doing what you feels best yeah um, and, and and that and your enthusiasm is so infectious that it's great but then everybody else just you know a lot of people just seem well you know it's raining and um I just didn't feel that there was the there was a lot of people there, but it seemed to be very spread out, and I think that was to do with the format uh, more than anything. Um, but as I said before, we had a good time. That's all that matters. So, what do you mean, like? So, you think perhaps that the 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 when you say format, is in like the route, or just the way like the spectator areas were, or something? There's just something not quite right yet. I think people got dragged around. Um, on the Friday night after we'd done down at Ard Tun, because the road was open, we came back uh, through Screeden and Greben. And the amount of people that were in Greben, the vehicles that were parked up, obviously no people about because there was no rally going on then. I think people got dragged, uh, a lot more campers on the island. People got dragged into stages. They didn't necessarily see the stage because uh, obviously it was cancelled on the way down. But there was a lot of people on the island, but a lot of people spread out over the island. So you didn't get that influx of people into Tobermory. Yes, Sunday was uh, quite a good afternoon, but Sunday night went went fairly flat from what I can gather. We went we went back home at half past six. Uh, but after that, uh, I do believe that it was quiet in the pubs and, and everybody had said the same over the weekend. Uh, mm. But there's a lot of people on the island and that's just the format, you know, and uh, I started in three different places, which is great. The, the whole of the island needs to see the rally and understand the rally, um, to appreciate the rally. Um, so, yeah, it's very easy to criticise. I'm not criticising anybody because I cannot. I didn't want to stand out there signing time cards, mm-hmm. uh, etc. Um, I just appreciate everything that everybody's done. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, without, without car 150, I can't go rallying. And without car one, car 150 can't go rallying. Without the marshals and the organisers, none of them can go rallying. Thank you very much to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, def- I definitely second that. You really feel for them, and especially when you were saying about the spectators along Greben and stuff, and they didn't get to see any stages on Friday night. You know, they're out parked. I mean, it's the nature of the beast, really, isn't it? It's, it's difficult to kind of apportion blame or anything. It's just at the end of the day, that's rallying. But still, you know, hopefully... I'm sure there's still enough of a, a spirit of the rally that will bring people coming back year after year. Oh, definitely, definitely. People will come back year after year. Um, the it is rallying, um, and you know we there's been a lot of talk and controversy over stage two, and we all know what went on at the start of stage two because we were both there. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the right decision came out in the end, and that was not to run it for 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 those top 17 cars that were there as far as I'm concerned it was absolute suicide um, I don't know how you feel but as soon as my helmet goes on whatever the conditions are going I'm going as fast as I can in those conditions and all the ferry when there's two inch of water on the road and you're on slicks hmm, there's going to be an accident isn't there yeah it's going to be I'm, I'm a big believer in driving to the conditions but you couldn't, we couldn't even drive down there at road speed could we no, you know, it was. Uh, we had two or three moments going down, and we weren't doing above thirty mile an hour. So what yeah. the hell it had been like at full speed? The right decision was made, in my view. People are upset about it, and I understand that because we lost some mileage. But conversely, what would you have said if Kerry had had a major problem and they hadn't sorted that out? You know, it's they had to deal with the accident, and I and I, and I agree with that. So 
ultimately, we all have our own views on it. Um, some people didn't like it. Some people did. And, you know, it's. Uh, I think it was the best decision, in my view. It's never going to be an easy decision to make, is no. it? When the buck no. comes back to, like, Richard and Rally HQ or something, and these phone calls are coming in, a lot of mixed communication and confusion and stuff and, you know, firefighting issues, there's... You know, I think there was a lot more to to that than it quite meets the eye. I think there was certainly a lot of confusion and a lot of difficulties in you know the decisions that were made for that. The how do you make a decision in the HQ when you're not stood there in those conditions? It's very very difficult. And Richard uh, took a little bit of time, but fair dues. He listened to the experience that was on the ground. We have a top international crow driver stood there. We've got a top um, clerk of the course stood there. That's uh, with Neil Shanks, Dan Barrett, you know, and then everybody else that's around has done a lot, a lot of rallying. And everybody's gone, this is stupidity. You cannot, you can't do this. Somebody's going to get hurt. And it, he, he, went, he listened to that, to that experience, which is all credit to him, you know, in the end. He, he wanted to run it. He didn't know what the, the conditions were. Those people relayed the conditions, and the, the the right decision was made. Very very poor for the spectators, but neither do they want to see somebody somebody hurt. Mm. I, on a personal note, um, I was very happy not to see it run. I was there the year Susan Cameron died, mm. and that's all I could see at the start of that stage. To be quite honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, and. I thought we don't want another accident down here. That would finish the rally. Yeah, make the right decision, chaps. Let's move on. Uh, plus, also, it saved a little bit of fuel, didn't it? A few quid <laughs> when you look at it that way. But, uh, <laughs> no, the right decision was made, I think. Uh, and and on that subject, you know, I don't think there's there's anything else to discuss. Uh, yeah, but it really with people when um, we could stay, sit here and discuss it, and it won't change it. He made the right decision. End up. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, I agree with the what with what you're saying, and the right decision was made. It then brought us down to our turn. Now, that <laughs> stage, our turn, that clockwise direction. Believe it or not, was my first ever competitive rally stage because back when I did it in 2012 in the Saxo, uh, there was nominal times, and we drove through at road pace because of accidents, and mm -hmm. uh, ended up that that was my first ever. My first ever stage. Now it's a while since we've done it that way round. How do you enjoy our turn? Um, it's the only time I've done it where I haven't gone off. <laughs> where have you gone off? Oh, everywhere. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> everywhere in our turn, it's like a Achilles' heel for me. Um, so you start the stage, you go down the side of the uh, the sea, and then it goes square right basically and then it drops down through the day and goes left and right over the crest yeah uh, i've been off coming back the other way there um going the way we went you go on down past the telephone box and then it comes it's real it's, it's a square is left and then it goes fast again and down to a gate that goes square left is that where callum uh, duffy went backwards in, in the uh, market i uh, well we nearly gathered with callum in there um, I think uh, Cal Callum needed some new underpants after we went past. Um, <laughs> the 2002, the, through the flying finish, which was up the straight, uh, going that way, we carried on went up the banking and ended up nearly in that rock face because I couldn't stop the damn car. I was that Which way were you going, Daniel? The, the way that we went this year. So okay. we came up towards the flying finish. We went square, square out at the end of the straight when the flying finish was over the crest. But as you come up that straight, there's a bit of a dip and then yeah. you go square right. I was that excited because I'd seen Dougie Hall off and that meant we were winning the event that I couldn't stop the bloody car. And uh, we ended up up against that uh, rock face that there is there with the front of the car. Luckily, it didn't smash the lights. Um, so, yeah, and I've, uh, I've been off where the house is. You know, you go around the house, going the other way. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can tell, I don't really like it. <laughs> um, but it's a necessary thing to do, and the mini's a little bit, a little bit big in there. She, she feels very big, yeah, some very quite narrow bits. Um, but 
which they didn't go off this year, so that was a start, wasn't it? So it must be Chris, because obviously I took Martin this year. It must be Chris. <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's the problem. Um, but no, uh, Ardton again is a necessary place to go. It's a long way to go, but I understand why we do it. Could just do with a bit more mileage down there, uh, which yeah. I do know they're, they're working on. Uh, they love it down there. It's great. I think that's uh, it's a necessary part of the event. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a much bigger picture of the event rather than just driving fast in the car. For the economic value for the whole island, I think it's extremely important that R turns it. Massive. Well, it was once described to me as Mull Rally as the figure of eight rally. So you take our ton out of it and it's the figure of eight rally, isn't it? You think about where the roads go. You're basically doing a figure of eight. Yeah. And that's how it was described to me. Put our ton in there, it's a different game. It's a different mm-hmm. rally. No. Nobody really likes going down there because it's so far for so few miles. But when they did the Vanessa stage up on the top, that was quite fun, that. I quite enjoyed that stage. So, uh, Fout- was it Fountainhead, did they call that, was it? Uh, something like that, yeah. I can't remember uh, yeah. what they called it. Um, but, yeah, that was quite a fun little stage, that. Mm. That was uh, back in the days when Scunner was running it, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yes. Mm. Um, yeah, I always remember uh, Martin Page did course car um, on that uh, on the year we did that or I'm not sure we did it one or two years he was doing course car and Martin's an ex-police sergeant he's a big lad and uh, I remember him telling me he had to get out of the car in the middle of the stage to sort the locals out so you can <laughs> imagine what went on there I always remember that you know it's like because we were late starting the stage I said we, was it your fault that we were late no the locals we have to get out and have words <laughs> so, so as I'm sure uh, in Vanessa it's the same as what's in Derveg and every other place uh, yeah. in the country when a few beers get in people that's it yeah, yeah. that's it but that's what all brings to the, the, the excitement and the nature of the ah, event definitely. You, you, <laughs> a few, you a few beers you, freezing cold on the hill <laughs> you can't take that excitement away from the youngsters what brought you to rallying that excitement yeah. going out watching it you know, you can't take that away from them. And uh, I I think it's as hard as it is to go to our ton and Vanessa, and uh, I think it's a necessary part of the rally. Yeah. I think um, you were saying there, you touched upon that the mini was perhaps slightly wide or too big for down there. That leads me nicely on to my next kind of question, which was um, the mini. How is it uh, on Mull? It's you know it's obviously quite well suited for the event. Either either it's quite well suited, or you're quite well suited at driving it, you know, up to its limit. How does it handle, and how and what's you know what stages does it go well on? Anything that's fast. So the Glen, it's it's really really good on the Glen. It's good down Chewith. It's good down Greven. It's good down uh, Screeden. Uh, um, it's difficult on the locks. The car is difficult on the locks. Um, I don't know whether it's just because the locks are normally very slippy. And, um, yeah, she struggles over the lock. And then you struggle up the up and over the hairpins. Um, but there are thereabouts. But we, we never just seem to be able to nail that properly. The Glen, um, gosh, she goes well over there. She goes well over Calgary. Um even through the arm court, Calgary and, and such like, but it's just that little bit wider as the road over there, isn't it? You know, you've got another six or eight inches to play with and um, the hill road, well, I think that's just me. I just struggle like hell on the hill road. Mm. Um, and especially since I put that new tarmac on, I can't, at night, I cannot depict the the uh, undulations, any anything on that road. It just comes back at me as being pure black and flat. Yeah. And, Yes, it's a driver's. If you know the stage, like John Macron last year took 20 odd seconds off me over there. I know this year going up, up the Glen and over the top, I had somebody at Derveg that got the clock on us. But there or thereabouts at Derveg, we get to the other end of the stage and she's taking 25 off us. And you're like, where's that 25 seconds gone? I can't go any faster. And the car is, because she's so wide, and as you know yourself on Mull, there's a lot of crests that you, you take off on the crest. So like a slight right or a slight left over crest and you take off. You generally, if you're not careful, land in the grass. Mm-hmm. You just land with half a tire on the grass, which 
ultimately you get away with in most places. But if you just a couple of inches out, you end up with a full tire in the grass, and then it gets a little bit more exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a couple of moments like that coming up to us on Saturday night, um, which was more because I'd seen James Ford pulled up, and you'd sort of like take your mind off the job because we then ended up in a bit of a no man's land with Paul and yourself, mm -hmm. um, minute, minute and a half, no point pushing it. And uh, we had a but the big moment up, up to her from not concentrating the car being just taking off and landing in the grass um, because she does take the whole road up. Mm. Um, but the car, if you can, she's very well planted. Um, she handles well. She goes well. Um, just when you're trying to change direction quickly, um, it's just that little bit heavy okay. um, and quite aggressive on the anti-lag, as everybody knows. Um which is a, a problem that ProDrive uh, never did the development on properly. And it was just, it was developed for the, the like Sodo and Meek, who quite liked that. But as a customer car, a little bit aggressive uh, mm -hmm. for my liking. And, and it, we've got two stages on the anti lag. We've got a, uh, a stage one and a stage two. And stage one is really a, a, when it's wet. Um, mm -hmm. And unless the, the, it doesn't really like, uh, stage one, it sends the turbo temperatures very, very high. Um, okay. So we'll live with that. But no, the, the car, the car's phenomenal. You know, it's far, the car's far better than me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, it takes me for a ride around sometimes. It and, sounds uh, incredible. It, I, oh. I mean, myself and Craig, we've got in car footage, you know, of times where you've been setting off in front of us and we always click the in-car on just a little bit earlier yeah. so that we can come back and watch and just listen to it. That noise, it's incredible. That You know, for, for us, that's what rallying is. That's what it's all about. You know, we had a bit of a standoff, didn't we, at the presentation with the two cars and <laughs> a bit of crack there. And um, Yeah, and, and everybody loves it. You know, everybody says to me, it's the best sounding rally car there is. You know, uh, nearly beaten by a Mark II coming towards you, but that is... I have some footage of it up the Glen from a few years ago um, when we started. I don't know where we, we must have started further down. You know about where the new cattle grid is. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. And yeah, yeah. And we, 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 you could hear it set off. And then you set up and you come up all the way up to where we, we started this time. And you hardly ever lift. There's just one or two corners where you lift a bit. And you can hear it coming for miles. And somebody's videoed it. And it sounds absolutely tremendous. You know, you just you think... There isn't a better sound than that, and that's what rallying's about. Yeah. Is that is what it's about. Night, lights, noise. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 where I was brought up with my rallying. So I I'm not I'm not into all this day daylight rallying, you know. I prefer the night time. Yeah. Just that that whole experience. That added challenge as well, of course, as a driver. Oh yes. But also it's very, very difficult for somebody to video you when you go off. <laughs> it's interesting you're saying about the the noise and everything actually uh craig was just in today he's uh, he was passing through and he's heading away off to sea just now uh, so we had a quick uh, rally debrief and we got the in car on and all that so um the wife was out at work so it was it was rally stations for a couple hours and you can imagine what we were like we were loving it um and he's shown me videos um hayden padden out in nz uh he had the he had the world car out there, um, all right. And he wasn't supposed to be using that for one of the one of the the hill climbs it was on. He was supposed to be using uh, the electric the EV thing, but then something right. happened to the batteries on it, so unfortunately he had to use the world car. But I was saying to Craig, I was like, but it must you know there's so much power in it. How much you know in the EV car is it is it not incredible? And he's like, yeah, it is cool when it's coming and spitting gravel you know sideways over the finish and in the fast stuff, but. You know, you you need that. You know, the the pop and the crackle and the noise and you know the anti lag and the, the you can hear the aggressive downshifts. It's it's a huge part of it, really. Massive, massive part of it. You, you know, they they tell me, you know, one of the uh, the most exciting bits of motorsport you'll ever do is in a Formula E car. It's the most boring thing you've ever watched in your life, isn't it? <laughs> you might as well watch your emotion dry on your wall, aren't you? It's about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, but they say it's the most exciting because the acceleration from those cars on those street circuits is phenomenal. But to watch, you might as well, you know, it's 
might as well be counting beans. You know, it's, <laughs> I just thought, it's not more sport to me than that. The noise uh, yeah. is the big, big thing. The noise, the lights. Uh, I always remember as a kid, you know, going out when my dad was road rallying and sitting in the back of the car whilst my mum was like go for service and we'd go and watch a selective or two and you could see the lights coming for miles and always the same on mole, you could always see the lights coming for miles and you'd be like <laughs> having a bit of a bet with my brothers, you know, well, what which car's this then? Is this an escort? Is it a mini? Is it an Allegro? Is it a Sunbeam? What is it? You know? Uh, and when they came past it was like who could who could guess the noise? Who could guess the lights? You know, and that's what rallying that's where my rallying career started, you know, where my interest in rallying came from. Yeah. And and it is, but you're right, it's the noise. It's the, the noise, the smell, everything. You know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like the smell of Castro R out of a classic car. <laughs> yeah. You know, I used to, I used to run my, uh, my classic mini, the car I did the British Championship in. 95 on uh, we used to use Castrolar in that and everybody thought it was great you know everybody used to go to the service area and go what have you put in that car <laughs> what do you mean it smells phenomenal it's said Castrolar you know like the old motorbikes and you know yeah. that sort of thing it's brilliant you know that's that's what it's about well the noise is certainly something that the mini does right but yeah, there is there is a bit of age in the car now, and we had spoke at the at the parade together a wee bit, and you said the old girl's needing a bit of love, maybe a wee bit of a birthday. You know what 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 she needing and how she holding up? She needs a patch. She needs a patch slapping on her ass for her HRT. I tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, she's uh, she's come up to mileage now on everything, um, so it's really a full rebuild on the car now. Uh, Engine, gearbox, rear diff, um, drive shafts. Uh, so it's full strip, put it back together. And who do, who does that? Do you do that? We do all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah we do it all in-house. Um, over the years, well, I bought it in 2017. Uh, so over the years, I've got to know where to get everything, do quite a lot of work. Uh, so I've done quite a bit with uh, Derek McGeehan of the of the years whilst I've had it. Uh, Derek's had three car three minutes at one, at one time. He's now only got his right hand drive one, but he has a mountain of spares. I have a mountain of spares, and when he needs something, he rings me, or when I ring, need something, I ring him. Uh, the beauty about the uh, about the car is because the engine was um, a BMW touring car engine. Uh, and use it in the, in the world touring cars uh, when they run them at 1600 is the bits are available if you know where to go to buy the piece the parts for the engine the, right. the rebuild stuff not cheap but they're available like a a new turbo for the car is like 6,000 quid Jesus uh, you know so set, set of valves not 16 valves what do they work out at I don't know 3 grand Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and everything. So if you, if you sent the engine back to ProDrive, I know four or five years ago, if you went back to ProDrive, the bill would have been 55000 to have the engine. Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> so, hence we do it ourselves. Bloody um, hell. So you'll yeah. have all the, all, the ke all the machinery there for doing all this work then? Yeah, we... <clears throat> Derek uh, had the blocks... Uh, sorted what we did uh, he he had the blocks re-machined he had them bored out and put the Nicosil liner in uh, by a company down south somewhere and then we used um, he had the pistons made um, and the rings the, the con rods obviously we take them out crack test them new bolts crankshaft exactly the same make sure everything's alright all the shell bearings everything's available the oil pump bits are available but everything isn't like it would be in your in your road going minutes of 10 or 20 quid everything's 100 200 300 pounds each by the time you've got everything it starts adding up but it's not 55 grand mm, yeah you know it's uh i think the last engine the you know, last engine rebuild i did which ended up with john rintoul did the car um i think it was in the low low 20s for the engine Still so a lot of money. It, it was still a lot of money. Yeah, still. Um, 
So a lot of classic mini bits to sell, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's certainly lots of pressures to get to the start line. And this year, you know, the rumours were that you weren't actually doing it. Um, your name was on the entry list and that was said that, you know, there was just something maybe that, is it something you, you might get a bit off your entry because you do something with the trophies or something? I'm not sure. And that was just like a, like a, you know, we'll put his name down, fingers crossed, he'll eventually change his mind. You know, was there times where, obviously we spoke uh, briefly, but, you know, was it a stage where you weren't coming up and then a last minute things came together? Um after the disappointment last year and uh, one or two other things that have, have gone on, I'd made a decision early on this year that I wasn't going to do it. The car was coming up to mileage. and a couple of events I wanted to do. I wanted to go back and do the Mueller again on Epping because uh, I'd done that last year and I won it and I really enjoyed it. I wanted to go and do that again. Um, I wanted to go back out to France to rally Charlemagne. Um, been twice, hadn't finished it first time. Uh, I took a back wheel off it second time. The centre console in the car went down, so I couldn't run the car. Really enjoyed the event, absolutely brilliant event. Um, they want they invite us, invite us out there. Um, so we end up with a deal to go. Um, so I want to go and do that again. A lot going on uh, with uh, work and personal things and just a lot going on. I just said, you know, I haven't got time to go to Mall. Mm -hmm. um, and I just was going to just not go this year. Uh, and Chris McCord driver decided last year that they were going on holiday come what may um, because they got fed up of coming up and going to for the weather. The weather was just like crucifying them. Um, so they decided they were going on holiday and said, right, okay. And then I got a phone call uh, the day of Silent Show, actually, off uh, Gordon Milne. Uh, well, I got a text for a start off with a picture of uh, a sign that said uh, leading entries for this year's rally. And I got this uh, message saying, your name's not on it. And I went, nope, and left it at that. So Gordon rang me and I said, why are you not coming? I said, well, uh, the reasons I've just explained, really. Um, and he said, uh, well, we want you to come. Who's going to do the trophies? I said, oh, I can deal with the trophies. Don't worry about that. It's not a problem. Um, because um, obviously we do the trophies. We have a bit of a deal going on with the organisers. Um, and I'll tell you now, the organisers have a lot better deal out of it than I do. But it's my way of putting a little bit back in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I said, I'll deal with the, uh, uh, with the trophies. Uh, I said, but I'm not coming. He said, well, can we put the entry in? Because I'm sure you'll come. I said, no. You do. I said, said, Gordon, if you'd like to do that, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. When I go to the, after I've been to the Mueller, I'll make me, I'll make me a final decision that, but I'm not coming. So we got onto the trophies and I said, well, a good friend of mine is doing the rally. He's entered. I said, if he can have the same deal that I have, I said, he will do the trophies for you. He's down me down the road. He's got exactly the same equipment as me. We can deal with it and I'll sort it. All right, okay, so we did a deal there. Uh, so I was never going, went to the Mueller, had a problem on the Mueller with the fuel uh, pump, so we retired on that. Okay, still not going. Right, I'm going to Charlemagne. Go to Charlemagne. But in between going to Charlemagne and, uh, and, and the Mueller, my mate who was doing it decided he wasn't going to do it. Um, so then I got back the job of doing the trophies again because he, couldn't, he wasn't going to do them because he wasn't going. So... I, uh, I decided that, uh, okay, I said, I'll do the trophies for you, not a problem. Um, and we'll, we'll go on from there. But I'm going to Charlemagne. Well, we'll leave your name on the entry list, not a problem. Okay. I'm not coming. All right, okay. So I went, go to Charlemagne. First two stages, absolutely had a ball, brilliant time. We had a nightmare getting there. The van broke down after, when we were in Dover. I had to send and bring another van down from here, which is 300 miles, to Dover, to swap all the stuff over, to go on to carry on to France, to get the other one relayed back on the RAC. So you can imagine it was quite a traumatic time, uh, especially when we went last minute as well. Um, the lads got to the scrutineering, 
uh, 24 hours late. You know, they got into scrutiny when they should have done, but they were 24 hours late getting in there. Um, so second stage, it's this French national round is Charlemagne. Stefan Lefabre was number number one, seeded number one. We were first on the road, though, because they run the world cars there in front of the R5 cars. So we've got ourselves. There was a, uh, a Fiesta world car. There was a Toyota world car, uh, as in a, a Corolla, uh, a Mitsubishi. You know, it was quite a few. There was five or six of us uh, yeah. world cars. So they ran us on, in the, on, on the road in front of the R5 stuff. So we were first on the road. Um, second stage, no problem at all. You know, brilliant. Got into it, really good time. We were third quickest on the French national round on the second stage. Brilliant. We're loving this. Get to regroup. Switches it off. Wouldn't start. Oh fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the middle of regroup, I know you're not supposed to work on the car in a regroup. In the middle of this town where they're serving you uh, pan chocolate, chocolate, champagne, if you wanted. It's all free, serving it, yeah, to, to for your breakfast. I've got the fuel tank in pieces in the middle of part firmly because I couldn't start the car, it wouldn't run. So what do I do? Do I just sit there and drink champagne or do I get the thing going? Eventually got the car going, and I don't know how I got it going, but I got it going. But right, we'll not switch it off. Got halfway through the next stage and she stopped. Um, no fuel pressure. Um End of rally for us went. Uh, it's quite funny actually because we got towed back to the service area. Found out what it was within ten minutes. The lad sorted it, but we were OTL, so we went to the pub, like you do. Uh, sat there <laughs> drinking, and uh, John Cressy had, uh, had been invited to go with the classic mini. So John was doing the rally and carried on. Mm-hmm. We were in the pub. We'd had a few pints. We got a phone call at the end of his leg and said. Could you uh, could you just meet me at the finish of this leg because I need you to look at the car? Yeah, no problem. Well, John's only slapped the car, hasn't he? Push the front wheel back thirty mil, bend the headlight, you know, ninety degrees to the wing, uh, made the right mess. And we were all looking at each other, thinking, "Well, I've had too much to drink. I've had too much to drink. How are we going to straighten this?" We straightened it though, you know, before he he went into part firm. Were you? We got his old Sam Young Carando, put a rope on it and attached it to the car <laughs> and rove it out and tweak the suspension a bit. All right, you'll be all right for tomorrow, John. You crack on. And uh, John, fair who's finished and had a brilliant time. We went out on the day after for, did three stages to make sure the car was all right, but my heart wasn't in it. You know, it's, you know, it's like it's, we've missed the main, the main bit that we, that we were there for. Got to make sure the car was all right, put it in the trailer, came home and, I got home and thought, my rallying isn't finished this year, uh, but I'm not going to mull. So I desperately tried to find something else to do. And there isn't anything really. Time might wise off the mull now. It used to be the Isle of Man and the Poker Stars. Um, and I made the decision. I rang, because Chris was going on holiday, I might rang Martin on the Thursday night, the week before. Asked him if he would be up for it. Yeah, yeah, I'll be up for it. Um, and then Friday, I made the decision at work that we were going, uh, get the get the car sorted, we're going to Mull. And on Saturday, Martin rang me up and said, are we going to Mull? I said, yeah, did I not ring you yesterday? <laughs> oh, nice to know. Nice to know I'm, I'm going on Monday because he was going up on holiday. Um, so that's how it came about that we went. So we didn't decide, I didn't decide till Friday that we were going, uh, the full week before. I uh, sorted things out at work, disappeared up on Monday. Wrecked on Tuesday and Wednesday. Unusual for me, I did a lot of, well, seemed to do a lot of miles. I did 600 kilometres in, in a day uh-huh. uh, wrecking with Martin because he'd only ever sat in with me on the Mueller. Uh, I had to get used to Chris's notes. He couldn't read Chris's handwriting. Uh, he had a hell of a week because he had to rewrite all the notes. Right, it's a big job that, it. isn't it? It takes a long time. In. Oh, big job. And he had, the, he had Thomas there, his three-year-old son. Uh, unfortunately, Martin's wife had to work. So he was he was uh, there with his son. Uh, John was there, uh, Martin's dad, granddad, looking after Thomas. And you can imagine, yeah, 
young kids and best notes don't mix, do they? Um, you know, they want to they want to scribble on them and everything else. So it was a hell of a week, really, for Martin. Um, and uh, so that's how it all came about. You know, we we set off on took him up to the test stage on Friday, and uh, uh, he realised that. I think he realised then that those notes were going to have to come out a little bit faster than he ever had done in the little classic mini. Um, <laughs> And uh, I've got to say, I loved the Glen Gorham stage. I thought it was brilliant. I only did two, one up, one down on it. Yeah. I thought that's enough. So road I've always wanted to rally on, always wanted to rally on that road. Um, and I think it's always the same thing, isn't it? When you can't, when you're not allowed to do something, you always want to do it, don't you? Yeah. You know, and we'd never been allowed. Uh, I go back years now, and when I had the Astra in, balled up in front of the police. We went up there one night down from the, where the mast is, the house with the mast. A chap came, a chap came over the crest there. I threw the diaster into the ditch, though, and he couldn't stop. Um, he went sailing past, but I got reported to the police and uh, banned from ever going up that road again in a rally car. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those things, isn't it? You know. Um, and so I'd never been allowed to go, and I thought it was been brilliant to 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 go up here. And yeah, I enjoyed it, and I'd love to be able to do that at the proper stage. I think it's uh, just one of those bits of road that would be great to be able to do. And uh, I have put my thoughts forward how it could be done, uh, see what comes of it. Um, so, yeah, so Friday, um, I think the baptism of fire for Martin up the Glen was uh, quite something because it is fast, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I don't know, I don't know how you found it, but at one point in the Glen, I just before the cattle grid, the first cattle grid, we nearly had to stop because you couldn't see a thing in front of you. It was raining that hard. Um, and then we set, we got through that and it set off up the Glen and Martin was just like, I don't know, I think he was just babbling shit really because his mouth was going that fast. And, <laughs> and, uh, well, I think he thought that's what he was doing, but yeah, Martin, he did a good job. You know, he got me through and um, very... Very difficult, different taking, different core driver to Mull. I've done Mull since 2002 with Chris. Every year of its run, I've done it with Chris. And Chris knows what I'm going to do before I do it. He knows everything. Uh, it's like, as my wife says, it's uh, it's like your second wife. He knows, he knows what I'm going to do before he does it. I know what he's going to do before he does it. I know his reaction to absolutely everything. He knows my reaction to everything and. I suppose it'd be like you and your Craig, isn't it? You know, you know what he's going to do, and he knows what you're going to do. Uh, yeah. he, and, it, and it has to be like that. And it's difficult for Martin to come into that, that um, and get into that, and get into the way I, that I, I am in the car, in a, on a place like Mull. Epping's a totally different place. We went to do the Mueller. There's a lot less notes. It's fast, flowing, wider, a um, bit more room to get away with things. You've no room for for error on mullers, you know yourself. Right. Yeah. So yeah, no, it it's was, not. Uh... It's certainly not an easy seat for him to jump into. So, you know, hats off and well done to jump in and do that performance, and then obviously coming away with second place. He must have really enjoyed being behind the piper, and uh, it was nice, obviously, to have his son in the car and uh, you know on, on the parade and a good it, a good weekend. A very very good weekend for Martin. He did a tremendous job. Hats off to him. You know. I am not an easy person to be sat in a car with. Um, I'm very demanding. Um, anything that's right of the, obviously left-hand drive, anything that's right of the gear lever or the handbrake has nothing to do with me. I have not got an idea about timing. I don't know how to switch the lights on. I don't know how to switch the heated screen on. You know, I do not know. Um, but the only thing I do on my, my side of the car is I, I, I turn the wipers on and off and uh, change gear and use the handbrake and the pedals. That's about yeah. where I'm at with it. Uh, so everything's, because in that car, everything's sat behind the driver with the, the centre console. You can't actually see it properly when mm -hmm. you're driving. So you can't you can't do any of that uh, sort of thing. And, and getting um, Martin used to that in the dark, um, very, very, very good with the marshals. Uh, ever so courteous with them all the time. Um, he uh, he shouted at me once uh, because when we went into regroup the first time we only got fifteen minutes for the service, didn't we? And uh, 
<laughs> I uh, just said to Martin down the down the headset, I mean, you're absolutely effing joking. We've only got 15 minutes. And the marshal went, it's not my fault. And then Martin went, no, it's not his fault. Shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. I'm well, sorry. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, yeah, he, he did a tremendous job. And he was, I, I think the, the, the big thing uh, for me, Fergus, was seeing him there with his son, his dad, John was there at the side of the car walking at the parade in case Thomas wanted to get out. And them being all so proud of what uh, what they'd done and what Martin had done. Um, he has been in a car like that, but not on mole. And I felt, you know, I felt, um, and he, he loved it because he's never really got involved with you. He's seen your podcasts, etc. He's never really got involved with you. He's not getting involved with like people like David Bogie, you know, uh, John and, and Paul and this. And he, he got involved with everybody and he's like, it's a different world up here, isn't it? I said, totally different world. I said, but where you you run with your dad in the Classic Mini, I said, you've got the same rapport as we have up here. Uh, and the camaraderie that was there, everybody's looking out for everybody else um, on the event. Um, and that's how it is. And he, and he loved it. He thought it was great. He, he loved, he's been on the phone, God knows how many times since. Um, yeah, it was good. Really, really, really good to, to, to be able to give him that opportunity and, and him take the opportunity. Um, yeah. but what you won't know about Martin is that Martin holds, I think, five world records. Okay. He was he was um, he was in the British skydiving team. So okay. that so he's done a hell of a lot of skydiving. So actually, to sit in the car with me was quite slow. But a different thrill for him, you know. He's he, what he's done is these team skydiving events, uh, and whatever he, he's been skydiving for years. Um, where does he Where does he jump at? Is he down at Black Knight? He does. He well, he's been all over the world, all over the world uh, doing it. Uh, doesn't do so much now, but since Thomas came along, he's 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 far too busy. Um, uh, with with uh, with Thomas, but he's he's jumped all over the world. Um, and if you wanted to go skydiving, he'd take you, you know. He's he's done over, you're saying he's done over 2,000 jumps, which is a wow. lot when you think about it. Um, yeah, so he's he's t- very, very talented that way, but also in his job, he's very talented. He has a, he has a, quite an enviable job for certain people, I think. He, uh, he tunes pacemakers. All right, okay. So if you have a pace, so he can adjust it, like how fast somebody's aye. operating at. He can give them a wee tweak. Aye. <laughs> aye. So if you get a bit older, you need to just get a bit, bit of a spurt on there. You know, you can just give him a bit of a tweak and yeah, <laughs> a yeah, special it's, button. It's bit, <laughs> yeah, it's a special button. Yeah. So yeah, he's gonna. It sounds like obviously there were some challenges in place to to make the twenty twenty four rally. And looking back, it's 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 been a long time since your first rally. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Was it in 1993? First mole rally? Uh, no, 1987. 1987. Yeah, so that would be when it was um, a road rally. That was when it was in a road rally. Yes, uh, I did it with my cousin uh, when I was doing a little bit of road rally in '87. Um, I did it then. Um, I can't tell you where we finished. The only thing I can tell you about that rally is uh, we did a full 360 on screen and didn't hit anything. <laughs> That's the only thing I can tell you about that rally. I can't. In, other than going, did it with my cousin, and that's all I remember. Uh, standard engine, uh, etc. Uh, Dad wouldn't let us do anything else. He said, that's all you can have. Go and do that. I did a few road rallies. And then road rallying sort of like died off. Um, and I went away from rallying. Uh, couldn't afford to do it really. Um, and I went on to uh, do quite a few motorbike trials, get into trials riding, and also sidecar trials. So I used to sit in the chair on the sidecar on the trials bike. Now that teaches a bit of balance and a bit of skill. And then we we went all over the country doing that. There was a lot of drink involved as well. I've got to say. Um, yeah, so yeah, eighty-seven was the first mall I did, and then nineteen ninety-three 
uh, was the first time I did it uh, as a stage event. Um, of course, roads. Uh, I did it in the car that John Cressy used for a few years. I'm still using now that uh, that's the very same car that we ran that I built in '93, end of '92, '93 uh, to come up and do. And it was all around doing the rally in '93 that I built that car. And uh, so it must be must be testament to how well I built it that it's still going. Yeah. But yeah, it's certainly so, held up, hasn't it? And yeah, so I can't tell you where we finished. Don't even know whether we finished or not. Um, 93. So I've done it every year it's run since 93. So this year was my 30th year of competing on, on Mull. So it was always going to happen, really. So if you've done it for th if you've done it for 30 years, yeah. talk me through the difference in the event from... 1993 say up until now and how it's changed over the years um for me or the rally itself do you want to know well certainly the the rally itself and the feel and you know as a competitor and the whole event well, say how it's changed in in 1993 we still had the beer rally the night before I remember you telling me about this at the bottom of screen when we were wrecking. <laughs> yeah. So we had the we had the beer rally. Not that I ever competed on it, because I can't drink anyway. Never have been able to. Three pints on my everybody's. Um but <laughs> uh, you know, so that sort of thing, the party atmosphere, the lack of problems with drink driving on the island, et cetera, et cetera. I always remember as a kid people saying well, I remember I remember the policeman saying, well, if you don't drive home, you'll get run over, so you're better off driving home. You know, and <laughs> like, I remember that as a kid. <laughs> and it's never left me, because we used to go to the Glen Forza. It was a party on a Wednesday night at the Glen Forza, and everybody was absolutely blind, stinking drunk, and used to end up fighting. As a kid, I remember seeing this, you know, and uh, it's never left me. So going back to 93, um, Yes, things were a little bit tighter then, but the party atmosphere was still there. People were still going. Yes, the guys in the top 10, 20 places were quite serious, but everybody else was there on a party. They were on holiday. The whole family went. Grandma, granddad, everybody went, you know, and they'd always been going for years. So that atmosphere was massive, massive party atmosphere. Um. So as, as the years go through from from 93, I wanted to just go and compete. Yes, I wanted to do as well as I could. 94 came, again, the same. And I started to get a little bit quicker, so things became a little bit more serious. Um, 1995, um, I did the British Championship in a, in a Group A mini and won the class on the British Championship. So the first three events were gravel, which were the Welsh, the Scottish, and the Pirelli. And I won the class on all, on all three of them. Went to the Isle of Man and absolutely destroyed the car, not the Isle of Man, Ireland, destroyed the car in, on the Ulster. Rebuilt it then for the Isle of Man, and we finished second on the Isle of Man in the class after quite a few things. So at the end of 95, after doing the British Championship, we went to do Mull. And the things for me had become a little bit more serious and I'd won the British Championship, the, the class on the British Championship, went to do Mull. How well can I go on Mull? You know, it's now becoming, you go back to the, uh, the to 1976 when Cyril Bolton was second on Mull uh, behind Willie Crawford in an escort. I think uh, Cyril was in a mini. You know, that was always my thing. Can I ever get to the same place where Cyril got to? I got into that realm of doing that. Yeah. And in 1995, we were sixth overall at the bottom of Screeden and the diff let go with two stages to go. So it was always one of those things where 
where would we have finished that year if we'd have finished? But we got a higher. The sixth overall was tremendous in in ninety five. Um, ninety six was quite a slack year on rallying for me. Uh, my wife had some uh, some serious health problems. Uh, ended up with some big operations, so I didn't really do any rallying and went back to Mull ninety six. Couldn't tell you what we did. Antically, I don't really remember the year much. Um, ninety seven. Um, we had another go and we went through quite a few problems of, I broke a crank I think in 97 on the car um, coming over the locks and we were doing again doing very very well um, so that was always a, a thing um, but then I went to do the Rally GB in the classic, in the group A car and we won the class on the, on the Rally GB um, which was brilliant for 97 um, and then 98, Astra. We uh, I bought Stuart Eggleston's British Championship winning Astra from his right-hand drive one. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to think what year I did it with Dan Barrett. I'm not sure it was 98 or 99 in an Astra. And we went I will tell you now, because I was actually looking at that earlier on. I've got EWRC yeah. open here. So... You did it the the Phillips Tour of Mull with Dan Barrett in two thousand and one in the Astra. Yeah, right. You yeah. came twenty fifth. Aye, that's because we've been off at all the ferry. <laughs> I'll tell you now, Dan Barrett's shit at pushing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, he might be a bloody good car driver, but he can't push. <laughs> I, I remember sitting him in the driver's seat and saying, "You drive, I'll push." Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, we went off at over school. So um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, we had the Astras uh, and what have you. But the rally was changing all through those years uh, for me because it was becoming more and more serious, more and more money involved, and more and more competition. the The event itself, uh, and I think the peripheries of the event, because um, I went through long periods where I never had a drink. Okay. Um, I couldn't go rallying and drink as well. Um, I struggle with fitness if I do that, and I couldn't do it. So I you know, either do one or do the other in my head. So you didn't. I didn't ever really get involved that much outside of what I was doing. But everybody was always telling me what the parties were like in, in Tobermory and uh, one thing or another. To be quite honest, Fergus, I became a boring part. Um, in a lot of respects, um, I'd never. <clears throat> so I, I cut, but the events were always really well run by the Twenty Three Hundred Club. Yeah. Um, you know they they well, they are now. You know everything. They, everything was done um, voluntary. It was always a fight to get an entry in. Um, and Pete Kenyon, who was the entry secretary, after. Uh, Taffy Edwards, uh, Pete, and we lived. We only lived about four miles away from from us here. You know, he used to get the entry form and go down and put it through his letterbox and uh, <laughs> make sure we we were there. You know, first we got an entry and and all this sort of thing. The internet's changed all that, but um, I became very good friends with Peter, um, and still are. You know, still we still are very good friends, and. Uh, you know, those were the sort of things you remember from the early days of, of doing the rally. And, and then it was always a case of, these, these are things like in those days, you'd go across and you'd go across to the rally on uh, from Melbourne on a Tuesday. And it was always a big talk. Who had you been on the ferry with? You know, uh, well, I've been on the I've been on the ferry today with Ronnie Beecroft, you know, or I've been on the, <clears throat> with uh, Mike Patterson. He was on the ferry. It was always a big thing. And yeah. you'll remember those days as a kid. Wanting people's autographs. Oh, I've seen, I've seen, uh, you know, uh, whoever it might be. You know, I've seen, uh, I've seen Callum today. I've got Callum's autograph today, and I know Callum was always like your, you know, the, the, the kid's idol on the island, wasn't he? You yeah. Know? Um, and uh, I'll apologise for the dog. It's next doors, and I'm going to go outside and uh, probably put some expanded foam in its mouth or something if it doesn't shut up. But hey, oh. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear the dog. It's fine. Yeah, you're all right, mate. So he just barks incessantly. Um, <laughs> I'll give it a sponge. 
Um, the um, yeah, so there was always that thing in the. I always remember that through the twenty three hundred club days, etc. Um, the rally itself was um, always a massive buzz. Always a lot of twenty three hundred club people about. You could always tell the twenty three hundred club people they had their twenty three hundred club jacket on, so you yeah. knew they all were. There was always a lot of them. They always brought a lot of people with them: the family, the friends. So yes, there was always a lot of people there in the organising thing. A lot of marshals, Raynet were there with the radio, so they brought a lot of people, and all that became this massive family and carnival that came together every October. Um, but then as I started going up outside of the rally in, in the summer or at uh, Easter time or at New Year, that carnival started again. More and yeah. more people from the rally were coming and joining, you know. Uh, we we were in Tobermory on, uh, on the uh, Millennium Year uh-huh. And the number of people that there that were there from the rally was tremendous, and so you had this carnival that kept going on. And then, when the twenty three hundred club gave up, all those people more or less stopped going. So that left a big hole in that community. Yeah, they stopped going. So what's happened now, I see, is that we still haven't got those people back. We've got new people, but they don't know how it was. Okay. Which is not a bad thing. Things change and have to change. But we don't know how it was. So we don't have that massive carnival atmosphere, that massive party atmosphere. Everybody's going for di- going to do the rally. Yes, you're having a good time. It's a nice place, beautiful place to go. And those few people get together. But we haven't got this big entourage of people, this big carnival going on. And I think if you were to speak to John Five, I've had quite a long conversations with John about it in the past. And he feels exactly the same. 2300 Club left the island and running it. And with that, that carnival went. Uh-huh. And it's a new carnival coming in now who don't know how it used to be and don't never understand how it was. So that's how the rally the rally has changed. But the biggest thing that's changed is the cost. The cost yeah. of the vehicles. You look like at a Mark II Escort, you know, you don't, you don't go rallying a Mark II Escort in a well, you can go in a 20 grand mark to Escort, but you're not going to be at the front of the pack. Yeah. Look at, da- look at David's car. I don't know how much money is in that. be as much money as that as there is in my Mini. Yeah. You know, it's a world car in an Escort form. Um, so it's the it's the cost that's done it. Drink driving laws, you know, everything like the Scottish drink driving laws. Now it's zero, isn't it? You know, you just can't have a drink. Um, yeah. and so people go to the car, buy the cans of beer, Go back to the where they're staying and drink in the house. They don't come out uh, yeah. the same, and it's just a different. It, things change, and uh, is it was the carnival atmosphere right in the early days where I remember it? Probably for the time. Would it be right now? Probably not. And yeah. I think that's just how it is. And um, Mull, fortunately for me, has a massive tourist industry, so they don't rely on the rally like they used to do. Mm, okay, that's something I didn't think about too much. You know, he's, going back in my day when I was your age, what are you now, about 17? <laughs> 31. <laughs> oh, you're 31, my God, you're that old. So we go back to, to when <laughs> I was like in, in my in my 20s. I remember seeing a survey about the rally and how much money it brought to the island and how much it extended the season by, and at the time they reckoned it extended the season by six weeks. That's a huge uh, amount, massive. You know, you work, you work on the boats. You know what the job is. Yeah, uh, the season is fifty-two ye- weeks a year long now, isn't it? There's people coming and going all the time. Yeah. Yes, it might not be as busy in November as it is in May, but there's still people coming and going. There's money coming on the islands. Money, people are coming, and it. When I'm going back to my twenties, going back thirty years, that didn't happen. You know, it's uh, so that was it was right for the time. It's not right for the time now because things change, and that's how the rally's changed. Uh, the roads are still the same. Yeah, the tarmac's a bit better or a bit worse, whichever way you want to look at it. But the roads are still the same. 
So do you think with the way that it's that's going, the sentiment that you're saying that in let's say ten or fifteen years time the rally might be at risk, or do you think it's gonna it slowly build its build its feet now? I think the rally's at risk now. Yeah. I I think the rally is at risk. Um and I, I, I don't think that in a, in a derogatory way at all. I I think the You've got to be very, very careful. And as the rally has changed with the amount of people that go in and the reasons why they go, the rally has to, in my view, has to look. The, the Mull Rally has always been an endurance rally. Yeah. Always. And the two nights and a day. And I'll tell you now, when they brought the two nights in, which was Stephen, uh, Stephen By, who brought the two nights in, he said he was off his rocker. He was mad. They didn't want it. Now, that's all everybody wants, isn't it? The two yeah. nights, it's an endurance, blah, 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 blah. I don't disagree. But modern pressures are way off the island, the people coming to the island, having the two nights, finishing late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, meaning that people really don't leave the island till Monday. They're having to have two weeks off work or 10 days off work. People are going, hmm. I don't really want to do that. I want to go to a rally, do my day's recce, do the rally, have a couple of beers, go home. You want to do it in three or four days. Yeah. Mull is 10 days. Um, I was chatting to uh, a good friend of mine, Hugh Hunter, who's been around the rally scene for a long time. Yeah. Um, hasn't been to Mull for a couple of years, and I asked him why. He said, I need 10 days off work. I need to be a whole, away from home 10 days to do it properly. And I can get on the plane. I can go to Ireland with my car and get on the plane on uh, Friday night. I can do my recce Saturday. I do the rally Sunday. I fly home Sunday night. I have half a day off work. Mm. And he said, yes, it's not 150 miles, but it's still 120 miles. And he said, that's yeah. what it, the pressures, modern pressures and Yes, the appeal is for Mullet, or it's this endurance thing. And I'm not being derogatory to anybody at all here, Fergus, but yeah. a lot of people go to Mull and they only do Mull Rally, uh, which is great. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, I think that's brilliant that people still go and they still do it because that's the only rally what they want to do because it's an endurance rally. But that isn't the future to the rally because those people will stop. Yeah. They won't carry on going, you know, the people that, like I'm 55, the people that are older than me, you know, that are going year on year just because it's more rally and that's where we go on holiday and I'm going to do that rally. I don't mock anybody for, for, for wanting to go rallying, but that isn't the future to more rally. More rally needs the James Fords of the world coming and doing it, you know, and bringing his entourage of people, those types of things to come. I think one of the best things that they ever did for the rally was bring the British Championship. Yeah. I don't think it's a future for the rally, but I think it's a good thing that they did that. It showed that the rally, the British Championship can come. They can put some, the the island will bite if you don't respect it. Um, the, the lads can put up some good times. Um, you look at the time that, uh, oh, what are they calling? Uh, your man did down the long one. You know, where he took Matt Edwards. Matt Edwards down the long one. Phenomenal. In time. Incredible drive. I've said many yeah. times before, what he did was incredible. Absolutely unbelievable, you know. But and and it, it showed that people can come and do that. You know, I still beat him, right? But it doesn't matter does that. That's that's by the by, isn't it? You know, he, <laughs> he crashed he crashed on the first corner because he didn't respect the island. Yeah. He didn't and um it's it's things like that, and that is the future to the event. Because if you look at where all the, uh, this is my feelings, you look at all the entries on a lot of the events, what are they all? They're all R5s. They're all mm. Mark II escorts. They're all lads that are going there. Those are the entries you want on Mull. Those are the people you want there. But they need to come, go, and do it as quick as they possibly can because of the time scales. Yeah. Now, you might say, well, that's not good for tourism. I don't think that really matters that much these days. There's that much tourism on Mull. You must yeah. be sick to the sight of tourists. 
you know, the campers and everything that comes on the island. And that's, but that's the the lifeblood of the island, isn't it? That's my feelings. And a lot of people probably listen to this and go, you're talking shite. But just really <laughs> think about it, you know, and I probably am talking shite, but that's my feelings. Bearing in mind, I've, you know, um, I've been going to Mull all my life. Yeah. I've been all my life. I went as a, as a baby. Um, I carry on going to Mull. Um, I've had a property up there for the last 20 years. Uh, so I know what's going on uh, with, you know, uh, with the tourism side of it. Yeah. And that's what we need. I mean, that's what we, if that, if this rally's going to carry on, we've got to look at the people that are going and why they go and who do we attract to get there. Yeah. Not being funny here, but since 1995, I've been in and around the top 10. Since 95, Fergus, 30, yeah. 30 years next year, I've been inside the top 10. You know, I'm like absolutely refreshing for somebody like yourself to come and get involved, you know, and do the rally, do the rally, win the rally, be inside, setting top three, four, five times, you know, fastest times, being there, there, thereabouts. That's what I want to see there. James Ford coming, doing the same second time there, you know, is nearly on for winning the event. It's that's what we need, and that's what I want to see. Yeah, um, as much as I like being inside the top, you know, being where I'm at and running where I'm at, I do realise I'm getting older, mm -hmm. and it's not going to carry on forever. Uh, but I want to see youngsters coming through like so. And you could say on this conversation, well, it's all about money, and youngsters don't have money. Um, if you could fill it the whole entry with young lads, young girls in Nissan Micras. That's the future to the rallying. They're the yeah. future to rallying. And you're 31 now. You're not the future to rallying. You passed it. You've you've had your day, mate. <laughs> um, you know. You know. And you really got to look and, and mm. say. And I think as an island, you know, you've got to look at it and say, what do we actually want here? Do we want this rally here? Do we want this carnival here for 10 days, or do we just want people to come do the rally? And go. We'll take the money off of Marseille for a couple of days, and let's get the bird watchers in. Let's get the the fishing people in. You know, the otter people, whatever it might be. Who do we, what do we want here? Mm. And it is, uh, it is interesting looking at it from like our point of view because obviously the answer for me is like I, I love the rally and we all love the rally. So you know we want that that massive festival. But yeah, it is interesting. What does what does Mull want? And what's 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 good for the island, really? What is good for the island? Um, and yeah, I love to see the the kids uh, enjoying it, wanting the autographs, being involved. You know, there was every kid, and you're probably the same with your car. Every kid wants to get in it, don't they? They want to have a look in it. They want to sit in it, and that's brilliant. I think that's great. You know, because that is. Is great for the island, great for the kids, and give them a, a, a something totally different to look look forward to. To um, let's be honest now, once the rally's gone, they've got four months of rain and deep, uh, dark nights, something you know, dark yeah. days. So they need something to pull them through on that. So we, you need to look at it on every scale, uh, on every, every point of view, and the the future, as I said before, the future of the rally is not me. It's not the man who's 65 pottering around in his mark to escort enjoying himself all the by he's not the future he's getting people like yourself james fords um the youngsters that are coming through from the juniors all coming and having a go mm, yeah uh, that's what it's about let's get those people there and i think the only way to get those people there properly is to for them to come do it and go the carnival atmosphere on the rally is only friday and saturday mm. But people are there from the weekend before to the middle of the following week or Monday, Tuesday, when they can get off the island. It's a long time. Yeah. And the, you, you, the island I see it only sees it. Yes, we've got the build up with the schools and all that, but they only really see it Saturday, Friday afternoon, Saturday, and into Sunday. That's all mm -hmm. it needs three days. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think, uh, you know, they think I'm off my head, but uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, so I, I think I think I think there's a lot to be learned from where the Isle of Man run theirs. Yeah. So like looking at the event as a whole, 
and how it's transformed yeah. over the years. What, let's say, two things would you say we're doing well, and then maybe two things that we could perhaps improve on? What what two things are you doing well? Yeah. As an as an as an event or as an island? Uh, as an event, because I think that we are borrowing it off the island. The island doesn't have to do too much. I think no. we as a an, an event, what are we doing to keep the event going? And you know, to put on a good event for the thing as a whole. Difficult one is that, but the Yeah, what are you doing? That's good. Well, actually putting the event on and managing to put the event on with the conditions, the logistical nightmare is brilliant. Yeah, I just, I'm in awe of it. You know, it's how the hell do you set off with that? You know, yes, Richard's got a, a hell of a job with Clark of the course. Well, that team around the back of him, you know, and they're putting it on the event. It's great. They're still putting 145 miles on or trying to put 145 miles on not getting it all all the time but that is um that's a brilliant thing the i think that just two things i can't really give you two things i just say to you that the actually putting the event on is so so big is is a good thing is brilliant mm -hmm. um i think there's a lot of lessons to be learned i could pick holes in everything if you really wanted me to but i could be very controversial um, but I, I, I don't I think one of the things that I miss and I'm not taking this away from anybody mm -hmm. that does it now the social media side where you get interviewed I miss Colin Clark and David Agreed. Evans I miss them tremendously because I had so much fun with those two guys you you two lads that did it this year, no issues at all. Um, but I ended up talking to him about corned beef sandwiches and Mars bars. <laughs> yeah. You know, because they're not experienced enough really to be at an event like Mull to ask the questions that I need asking, like you're asking me. You know, you live it, they breathe it. They, I know these people have to learn. And with experience, it will get better. But the event and the number of people that said to me, they don't really, a lot of people don't like Colin Clark, but they like him on that. Yeah. You know, because he asks the questions, the probing questions, you know, and uh, get the reactions and off everybody. And I, and I think that's one thing that maybe needs a little bit of a look at. Yep. Um, I think the radios this year, perhaps, not the radio timekeeping, was horrendous. You know, you never you never knew where you were, what time you'd actually done, what whether that was radios, communications, or what I don't know. I can't put it down to the timekeepers because I don't know the story. That was a big, to me, was a big problem this year. Uh, and the last thing I think is an absolute bloody shambles is refuel. Okay. I think trying to drive in and out of a bog to fit and refuel your car is just, I know it. You could say, well, it was the weather, but actually, can you actually remember when the last dry mull was? Yeah, not for a while. <laughs> not for a long time. So I know the logistical nightmares. You know, everywhere we went, there was a bloody porter bog, wasn't there, at the side of the road? You know, you could, at the start of the stage, there was a there was a toilet. I remember seeing one on Greben on its side. I'm glad I wasn't in it. Um, <laughs> It was it was noted at the rugby club at uh, Garmany there. The rugby club was closed. Where did the girls go to the toilet? They couldn't go. And was yeah. having regroup for whatever how long it was. And uh, if you were eagle eyed, you'd have seen what I saw, and that was two of them sat in the bushes. Yeah, you know, and, and that's you know these these sort of things. I know it's easy to say, it's been overlooked. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, Fergus, at the end of the day, is I'm just in awe of people that will give the time up and do and put it on so we can go. That's that's what they do. It might Definitely. not be 100 percent right, but they allow us to go rallying, and the Islanders allow us to go rallying on their 
on their isle, on your island. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the the, the competition, the uh, other competitors, the camaraderie and whatever. You, generally, very very good. You know, yeah, you, you don't. As I said to you before, I went to Charlemagne. I've been three times now. That's about as close as you get to what Mull used to be like. Yeah. And uh, so that's something you would recommend having a look into Charlemagne and get right, over yeah, there. Yeah, I'll be going again next year. Yeah. Yeah, you know, somewhere like that. And John Cope actually was the man that got me into it. Um, and yeah, he's it, just. Yeah, it's just how it used to be uh, on Mull, if you will, this carnival atmosphere going on and the service parks are absolutely heaving all the time. And they just love it. They love the rally. And like, you know, the true Mullocks love the rally. Yeah. You know, and I know it's like everywhere, everything changes. People move on to an island. You know, the people, yeah, the, I don't know what the, the split is these days from uh, Mullocks to, uh, to, to, to people that have moved on to the island, but I think the percentage is, is growing to more people being on the island than actually true mullocks yeah. um, that haven't moved there for a rally. They've moved there because they want a quiet life. And uh, I'll say thank you to them for letting us do it. You yeah. know, it's The mullocks want it. So, yeah, so answer your question. I can't really give you two, but those are the things that I think. Yeah. Uh, from from well, my point of view. Well, I definitely agree. Like, it's unbelievable that so many of these people volunteer and give up their time oh. and, and the the rain is like sideways in and it's just coming in and, you know, they can't get the radios to work and just really challenging trying conditions. Oh. And they're there doing that for us so that we can go and have fun. I think, you know, I think we both kind of can, can you know, agree that we're, we're so deeply thankful to them all, um, you know, to Richard and his team and, and the whole organising team. It's, you know, it's... It's a really difficult thing to do, and we really do appreciate what you do for oh, us. It's it's it's, it's incredible. The, the, there'll always be little niggles, but you know these can all be sorted. From from a whole perspective, thank you for for keeping the rally going. Mm. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's uh, well said, and uh, we've all got to be thankful. And uh, it's I think also what we need to remember as competitors is that. These people do it for nothing. They do it for the love of it, and they're not there to be abused. Yeah. They are there to be thanked. And I had a a very nice conversation with a gentleman at the uh, just before we went on the parade. As you probably realise, with my car before we went on the parade, we had a few issues. Um, she started using a little bit of water and got warm, and one thing or another. And this this uh, we were under the bonnet of the car. Uh, the lads were sorting it out and it was all getting a bit stressful. Uh, and this guy got me away and I said, what, uh, I just said to him, will you just bloody move out of my way? You know, you're under the feet. And uh, he came to the side of the car when I had me in the car and he said, can I just say something to you? I thought, oh, God, don't start now. Yeah, it's <laughs> going to go. And he just said, I understand what you're saying to me. And he said, can I just thank you? He said, you both, you and Martin have been absolutely brilliant all week and you've always said thank you at every control I've been at. And that, I'd never seen the man. You know, he always looked different with hat on, don't they? Yeah. And uh, I said, I thought, oh, so, oh, no. I said, at least I can do my I think we were just coming to bollock me for doing, for, for asking you to shift. He said, no, I said, don't worry about that. He said, that's a stressful situation. This car has to be sorted. He said, but I want to just thank you for being nice to us in such shit conditions. Yeah. He said it means a lot. So I would say to anybody listening to this is please remember that, that these people do it for nothing. They do it for the love of it and they're there to be thanked, not abused. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. We all get stressed, you know, um, we can't do it without them and I'm not going to do it. I don't want to do it. I'll be prompt, perfectly honest with you. You know, I know the organisers this year were offering thirty quid for a marshal. I thought, yeah, well, if I was going to do it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take the thirty quid. I don't want the thirty quid. I'd do it for the love of it. Nothing, yeah. not else. But yeah, I think I like my bed too much to be stood out there in the middle of the night <laughs> in that pissing rain. 
<laughs> well, so talking that's about, selfish. <laughs> talking about your bed, Daniel, I am, you know, appreciative of your time. I see that no, I've no. taken up a lot of your time. Just before we go, um, just two kind of quick fire questions. If there was Aye. any car that you could do the Mull Rally in, what would it be? Uh, first and foremost, not with you and yours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> car, not person. <laughs> you're off you, great. Uh, car, if I could do the rally or any rally in any car, what would it be? Lancia yes. Stratus. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, Historic, I, beautiful Group B. Yeah, I, I, had, I was very lucky years ago to drive one at Oulton Park on a charity day. And uh, it belongs to Paul Tattersall, the man with the big hat that used to do the commentary. Yes. On Mull. It was Paul's car and he let me drive it. He never let me drive it again, but he let me drive it once. <laughs> um, brilliant. I loved it. I loved it. The sound, the whole lot. That's what. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it sounds a really strange thing to say, but uh, yes, I'd love to do it something like that. Fantastic! And then final one: what is your uh, favourite stage on the Mull Rally? Don't particularly have a stage a favourite one because I think every stage has something that I like. Yeah, the probably the maybe the one I look forward to doing the most is the original long one, Lock Chewith. Calgary Bay. Yeah. You know, that's the one. The one I least like doing is the Hill Road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. I should have asked your least favourite as well. That's the least like. But yeah, the least favourite is the Hill Road. So I'm going to ask you a question now. Okay. Which is your favourite? Oh, the Glen Road. 100%. Glen Road. Oh, yeah. I loved it. I must admit that um, this year, there was there was more pressure to perform on it, so I, I was you know a bit more nervous. But um, yeah, the the end car footage that I put up, or uh, you know the Glen, yeah. the Glen back to Tobermory. I've had some good times yeah. in that stage in the past, and I I love it. It's it's a fan. It's just it's so that first bit's really enjoyable. So so fast, and then you're just driving home after that. Um, but going the other way, I'm not as good or i don't know it as well but i must admit um you know in the last couple of the stages that what what did we call it was it the long one we called it stage 16 this year where we ended up coming through the glen going all the way and we got to keep going you know yes. over that fast like motorway bit towards the end my brakes were shot so I, I wasn't really committing but still it was a hell of an exciting really good well you you, you were you've never been fortunate enough to do the whole of the glen no, the last never. battle grid. Yeah, well, 2002, we we did the hill road and down to the end of the glen. Now, that as a stage, going back in the years, is, I know it's got the hill road in there, but that down the glen there was, down that last piece, of, it's absolutely tremendous. It's just flat out the whole way. And I, I did that in the Mitsubishi that was geared for, about 135 and you're just on the limiter where you go where the stage finished this year down through that uh, down through the cattle grid uh, yeah. through the dip in the cattle grid and then away down the glen down there you're just absolutely flat out the whole way down there and there's a wee bridge isn't there as you go down there that goes like slightly right over a crest through the, the little bridge down there yeah yeah I don't ever. I swear we went through that bridge sideways that year, up with two wheels up one side. We were that fast, and uh, I'll never forget that 2002 when we first won it. We were fighting with Neil. We'd had a big hold up at the start of the hill road, and we got to the end of the stage, and I'd taken 17 out of Neil over the hill road and down there, and it, it was the best. I would say to you, it's the best feeling I've ever had in my in, in my rallying career. Was to beat Neil McKinnon down there, yeah, and and take the victory off him. And I've loved, I loved it. You know, a few, a few years ago when we won the Brit, when the um, the British Championship boys were there, we won it. But it was never like that feeling. It's never like the first time you win it. You know, you'll never feel the same again. Yeah. Even though I gave you the victory last year, you did. Thanks for that. Uh, well, the car did. She liked you. 
<laughs> Although I, I, I put it down to you were trying to harden the locks and that's what caused your wheel bearing issue, but... Well, it had been uh, it had been manifesting itself since uh, the middle of the afternoon. So, um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's no fair dues to finish first. First, you must finish, and that's uh, the thing. I've always I always go back to fair dues to you last year. There was nobody more pleased than me that you'd won it, uh, even though I was pretty pissed but, uh, <laughs> with you, uh, with 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 the with myself really. Uh, but no. I, and because it, as I said to you before, it needs people, it needs youngsters, it needs people to come through and show that there isn't this monopoly on on winning the rally between yeah. myself, John, and Paul. You know, uh, yeah. we need to we need to have people. And uh, uh, yes, I just want to know how you raise your money with great difficulty, yeah. but yeah. A, an aura of optimism, always optimistic, and yeah, exactly, exactly. You want to do it. You you are to me the epitome of what rallying is about. I want to do it. I want to do the best I can. I need to find a way of doing it. I'm going to find a way, and I'm going to find a legal way of doing it, and make it right. You know, yeah. and I'm going to do my best and do the best I can for my sponsors and everybody else that's put faith in me. And as much as I take my hat off to the organisers, I take my hat off to people like yourself that can do that. You know, and I've got that drive to do that. I used to have that. Now I just uh, find I just work longer hours to try and pay for it, um, but it's I'm in a bit more of a fortunate position than I was twenty years ago. Yeah, um, and such so like, still hard, still substantiated, but people like yourself, I mean, crack on. You are the future to the rally, you know, the youngsters. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know I look back over thirty years of rallying on Mull. I've had some bloody good times. I've had some seriously shit times. Um, but I never, ever um, look at it and think, I wish I'd never done it. Yeah. I always, I'm always glad I've done it, and that's what you have to be in, the, yeah. in this game. Um, sound like I'm going to give up, don't I? You know, but I'm not. <laughs> I, might not come, I might not do them all next year, but I'm not going to give up rallying. I need to... Uh, my, my next big thing is, and uh, I need to talk to your brother actually. Yeah. Um, one of the Tago. things I really say again. Otago. I want to go and do the uh, silver fern. Oh, fantastic! That's been that. That's the next thing I'm working towards in two years' time. Try and do that, and I want to take. Uh, I want to take a mini to do it as well, a classic mini. That would be bloody awesome. Yeah, so that's that's my next big goal. So if I don't if I don't do mull next year, that's because I'm saving up to go and do that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh no, they'll make you feel right at home out there, don't you? Whatever. Oh that yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It was uh, sad not to see your Craig this year because he's a good lad. I like him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's certainly sure. a different breed, and he brings some smiles all around him. So no stacks of enthusiasm. He's got my sense of humour. <laughs> 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 we could describe I mean, that sense of humour, but I don't uh, think we'll, we'll, the, uh, we'll, we'll be able to publish this on YouTube later. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll not do that. But I was under yeah. strict instructions from my wife tonight to behave myself. No, you, it's been it's been fantastic. Mother, she said, "Your mother will want to watch it." <laughs> <laughs> That's why you've been so well behaved. I well, there's no point. You know, I'm getting too old for uh, for for being uh, doing the, back to the schoolboy antics. Yeah, and uh, and what have you? But uh, yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been great, and uh, as I say, it's uh, you always bring a smile to my face, and good. I think it's uh, yeah, it, it, it's what rallying's about. What, 